Hey everyone, we are at the fourth and final section of the dialogue. This is the second afternoon. This is gonna be a little bit quicker, I think, than the previous three. The second afternoon, remember, opens with a challenge from the end of the second morning, which was the existence of suffering that's not caused by humans. Either this could be things like natural disasters, or it could be suffering in the animal world that's not caused by humans. Whatever it is, it's not the result of free choice by humans, and so it seems like um, God might still be responsible for creating this evil. Now, this gets us to the third and final element of Miller's theodicy, which is the existence of free beings that are not human. So, for example, you have things um, in the Christian tradition and many other religious traditions which posit um, evil but free, powerful beings like devils um, or demons. And uh, Miller says if you... If you have these things in your theodicy, then that can account for um, suffering and evil that is not caused by humans because it can be caused by these powerful beings. Um, that means that the full theodicy is now on the table. It has three components, and they are these. Get this in the frame here. Um, remember, the first one is that there's free will in the world. Some beings have free will. The second is that justice is achieved in the afterlife. And third is that some evil is caused by free supernatural beings, which is what we were just talking about. These three things together, Miller thinks, can explain how it's possible that God can be omniscient, omnipotent, omnibenevolent, and still there can be suffering in the world because of, um, in general, free choice. Now, the theodicy that Miller has produced, um, as he admits in the dialogue, does not have to be plausible. Um, I mean, if you were to believe it, you would have to believe, for example, that there are things like demons and devils, which not everyone does. People find that kind of a hard, hard pill to swallow. But the point of Miller's theodicy is not to make something plausible or that you have to believe. The point instead is just to show how it's possible that God can be all three things, right? All good, all knowing, and all um, powerful. And still that there's suffering in the world. So there's no logical inconsistency there. Um, this is not enough, of course, to convince uh, Gretchen that there is in fact a God, but the point is not to convince anybody that there's a God. The point is simply to um, show how the problem of evil is not really a problem. It doesn't show that there can't be a God, which is all that Miller is trying to do. Now, of course, the dialogue has many more things than we've covered um, in these lectures. It has lots of twists and turns in the arguments, and there's a section at the end which covers what um, Gretchen thinks about the existence, of e the existence of evil under her worldview. But um, we don't have time to talk about all those there, and I think I've covered in these four short lectures most of the basic ideas. Um, I hope this helps, and I'll see you on Friday.